In this video, we will create a conceptual design of a building using the in place mass tool. This lesson will include creating levels and creating an in place mass. First thing we want to do is we want to set the levels that we're going to use to help define the mass. I'll go to the south elevation and I'm going to take a look at the levels that are already created and see what we can use with those. Level two is a little low. So I'm going to set that to 13 and a half feet. And then I'll add another level above that, which will represent the roof level. From the architecture tab, I'll go to level and carefully aligning it to the left extent and right extent. I'll add what's called level three. And I'll go ahead and put this one at 28 feet. Now to define the top of my building, I'm just going to go ahead and copy what we were calling level three up another four feet to represent the top of the parapet. Now that I have the level set, I can go ahead and rename them. Starting with level four, I'll call this one top of parapet. And level three, I'll call that one roof. Because this level has views associated with it, when I change the name, it's going to ask me if I would like to rename the corresponding views. In this case, I'm going to say yes, because I want the roof level to be represented accurately in the project browser. Now I'm going to jump back to our 3D view. And with those levels created, we can go ahead and create our mass. To do this, I'm going to go to the Massing and Site tab, and I'm going to create an in-place mass. When we create a mass, we need to make sure that the mass element is visible. And sometimes when you start that, it's going to ask you if, if that element type is visible. In this case, it is. We can give it a name. I'll just leave it as Mass1. And now we can draw lines to represent the footprint of the mass elements. So I'll start with using the rectangle tool. And I'm going to let it draw on the face of an element. And in this case, it's going to be our building pad. So you can see how it's highlighted when I move the mouse over the top. Using the rectangle tool, I'm just going to go through and add a few rectangles. And after I create the rectangle, you can see it's kind of a closed loop there. I can click Create Form, and it'll create a masked form for me. I'll just repeat that process a few more times. And after I've created the forms, I can go back in and I can adjust their heights to suit the needs of the project. And if you had to be precise, you can see if I click this face, I have the option to adjust those dimension values to whatever I want it to be. You could also be a little bit more free form about it and just kind of drag them up and down as you see fit. Now that I have the masses created, what I can do is I can subdivide these into different shapes, or I can cut out a portion of it using the void form option, which is what we're going to do here. So I'll use the rectangle again. And what I want to do in this case is I'll draw a mass kind of the same way we were doing it before. But this time, I want to draw it as a void. So I can cut out a corner of it. So just kind of making sure that I'm highlighted on the pad so that I can use that as the footprint. I can cut out a portion of the mass here on this side using the void form. You don't have to be super precise with this because we can always adjust it later. So instead of create form, solid form, this time I'm going to click void. And then I can use the z-axis toggle to drag it up to the point where I want to create the void. If I click off to the side, you can see I just now 
cut a hole in the building. I can use that same freeform modeling using the UCS here to move it around and adjust the void to suit my needs. Now I want to fill this in with a different material. So I'll go ahead and draw another rectangle back into this area here and create a solid form. But this time I'll bring it all the way up to the, where we terminated the void. And now I've got a shape that we can work with. The next thing we can do is we can actually create uh, edges if we select the, the side points here. And to do that, we can select one of the edges. And I can use the Add Edge option to divide this up. So you can see as I move my mouse around, there's a line that's going to show up here. And I'm not going to be super precise with this, but we're just going to go through and create a conceptual shape that we can then apply different materials to. So I can do this as I go around this center mass to create portions that might be glass or might be brick or some different materials. Once you're done, we can just hit Escape. And we can go ahead and finish the mass.